Hi everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts and today I'll be showing you the first five cards that I created with the June 2019 Hero Arts card kit. And this was a jungle themed kit. There were a lot of safari and jungle animals as well as some grasses and leaves. And this was overall a really fun kit to work with. You did uh, get a sample of the Daniel Smith watercolors and there were just little dots of watercolor that you could work with and you have more than enough colors to color every single animal in the stamp set. I think you get six colors of green, which was really nice since half the stamp set were grasses and leaves. So I do end up using all of the greens. And I think at the end, um, the least amount I have left are the green colors. And how I color is I typically lay down a light wash as you can see with this flamingo and then I go back in usually with the same color and just add darker areas. I don't have a light source and I don't work at it too much because if you add too much water it becomes more difficult to blend um, and add contrast. So most of these images took me 10 seconds and I was done. And I really enjoyed that. I wasn't um, very particular about shading or having a light source. These were very quick and easy and I enjoyed working with this palette. I did use it for all 10 cards and I still had some paint left, which was surprising because when I first got it, I was like, well, I can probably do three cards with this, but a little goes a long way with this palette. And I will say I, I have not worked with watercolor before, um, but I think that these are very high quality watercolors. I don't know how much they run for, but I'm really happy that they came in the kit because my Copic, uh, I don't have a lot of refills, so my Copics are running dry. So I was happy that we got that in the kit. So now I'm moving on to the card. There's a few things I did off camera, such as all the die cutting. You saw I cut out a gold frame. I just used um, stitched rectangles and then I arranged them together to form a frame. And then I also cut a hello out of some gold cardstock. That hello came in a previous hero kit and along with the pink banner that you will see in a few seconds. And now I am trying to create some water for my flamingos using the Daniel Smith watercolor set. I added some ripples in there to make it look like the water was moving. And here I'm arranging my card to see what it might look like. And I, I did use the black ink cube for most of my sentiment stamping. For my image stamping, I stuck to VersaFine Onyx black ink and I added embossing powder. Embossing powder will help you color because it creates sort of like a well so your color won't move outside the lines. So now I'm just adhering my hello and my friend. I did add acetate behind the gold frame just to uh, add, I don't know, I typically add acetate to my cards. I think it looks really professional and um, more expensive to me so I typically do that especially when I have window frames and now I'm just arranging my greenery and now I decided to commit just checking that I'm not going outside of that gold border I do use my art glitter glue to adhere all of these leaves down I trim some of the leaves up so that it's easier for me to glue behind one another. And then I wanted to have my flamingos right in front of all of that greenery. And this is a really cute summer card. It's a little bit different than my next few, which are definitely more jungle themed, but I thought this would be cute for summer. And I like the gold accents. Whenever I think of flamingos, I think of pink and gold. And my bedroom is actually all flamingos because my favorite color is pink and I don't know any other animal that has pink on it. So decorating my room with flamingos was an excuse to decorate my room pink as an adult. <laughs> and I also have like the ba banana leaves and 
the grasses also all around my room too so this card is definitely up my alley it would actually go really cute in my room so I might keep it but there's a finished panel you can see the shine from the acetate I really love how that looks so I'm just going to add some tape adhesive on the back of this panel and adhere it straight onto my 110 pound Nina card base and that will complete card number one for card two, I'm going to show you some more watercoloring just because you did get the Daniel Smith watercolor palette in the kit and I figured most people probably want to use it. Although they probably don't want to copy my coloring because uh, I think I did this whole panel in 10 minutes. I, I was really quick with it and I tried not to think too hard about it because I can easily get overwhelmed by watercolor. And the first thing I did when I got these watercolors was I tried to do no line watercoloring and I had to leave. <laughs> I had to leave the room for like 30 minutes because it just wasn't happening for me. And I can do no line coloring fairly well with my watercolor, I mean with my regular pencils, I'm sorry, and my Copics. But with watercolor, you know, you have to worry that the water will spread outside the lines and after that I stuck to my embossing powder and I've been happy since but I think if someone could do a no line watercolor uh, with this stamp set I think that would be beautiful and like I said that was the first thing I wanted to do but I'm not a watercolorist so I don't know why that I thought I could conquer that but I couldn't I might come back to it when I'm a little bit more comfortable and I did enjoy working with this kit. I love the images. Like I said, tropical leaves or anything that's related to summer, I love. Summer cards are my favorite cards to make other than Christmas cards. So I was very inspired by this kit. But lately, the last three months apart from last month, I have been struggling so hard with the hero kits. Leave me a comment down below if you're feeling this too because I've noticed a lot of my favorite YouTubers have either cut hero arts totally out or they're cutting it down to five cards one kit, which I can totally understand. I know some people are doing more than one kit a month, but still like um, I usually get inspired by other people's creations and there's just a lack now for hero arts. So I think I'm not the only one when I say that for a few months now I've been very challenged by their kits and they're beautiful. I mean, whoever illustrates their kits or if there's multiple people, uh, they're incredible designers and artists, but they're just not my style. And it's hard for me to come up with ideas that are outside the box because typically I will see someone who has the same idea that I do and I don't want to make a video for something that's already been done. So um, I'm hoping that future kits will be more like this. I feel like most kits that involve coloring I'm much more comfortable with. The silhouette stamp sets I'm a little apprehensive, a little bit reluctant, hesitant to work with. I love how that monkey turned out by the way. Anyway, we're gonna keep on going here. I'm going to glue down all of these greeneries that we cut or that I die cut and I'm just arranging my branch and my monkey. I wanted him to be in the center. I did cut this white frame again with my rectangle dies. I'm going to adhere the monkey to the branch and then I will temporarily adhere the branch to the side of the white frame. I do end up gluing the branch straight down onto my card panel and then popping the frame up with the leaves, but I just wanted to glue it to the side just so that I could add my leaves where I wanted them to go. And I'm just adding random leaves. I wanted the toucan to be in the corner and then I will also have the snake in the corner on the top of the card. And I am leaving some room right below the monkey so that I can add my sentiment. And I cut and colored more images than I ended up using. I knew in these 10 cards I'd end up using them anyway, so 
I always typically tend to stamp a color more than I need and I'll just use the leftovers in a future card. So now I'm just going to add the last little leaf and then I think this is a water lily and then I add the snake right on top of that. And I love how the snake turned out. It's like a cheetah snake. And that will complete my little frame of leaves. Now I'm just deciding what background I wanted and I really liked how the dark green looked. So I end up using that. I am gonna take my card base and I wondered if I wanted the dark green frame and the white panel, but I ended up liking the white frame and the dark green panel. So now I'm going to take my Misty. I didn't want to mess it up at this point. And I think I chose Let the Adventure Begin. And I'm not sure like who you would give this card to, but I like the sentiment anyway, so I used it. I will white heat emboss it. I use Versamark to ink it up. And then I just pour my white embossing powder over that and heat set it. And now I took that branch off of the white frame and now I'm gonna glue it straight down onto the green panel. And I will also add acetate behind this white frame. Like I said, if I make a window card nine times out of 10, I'm going to add acetate behind it. I do use my art glitter glue pretty much for all the gluing in my life. It's very strong. I love the um, fine tip on it. So you can glue glitter and really small things onto your cards. Now I'm going to add my foam tape. Uh, this foam tape is from Uline. It's very sticky. That's why I'm using the scissors to help me out there. And then I'm just adhering it onto my green panel and I had a little bit left over so I'm trimming that off. And then I will flip this panel over, add some double-sided tape, and adhere that right onto my card base. Super cute card. I think this would be cute to give to a boy or a man. Could be masculine or feminine. A lot of these cards I make are can be. And that will complete card number two. For card three, I did some die cutting off camera using the straight vine that came in the kit. And I just die cut this vine several times on this green panel. And now I'm gonna add some art glitter glue behind that and then add it to another dark green panel that's the same size. And you could easily just cut a dark green panel down to, I believe I cut it at three and three quarters by five inches. Um, but there's something about the inlay technique that's very satisfying, the even layer, the flushness, and especially when you glue the vines into the die cut panel, it's like a puzzle, it's very satisfying to me. And I don't use this technique very often, but I should because it ends up looking like a piece of patterned paper. It doesn't look like you just glued vines onto a paper, you know? And I did decide to use three colors for the vines. I did use a highlighter green there in the center, so I'm trying to use that one pretty sparingly. But I wanted some contrast, so that's why I decided to use that very bright color. And I did add the dark green panel behind the die cut panel because I didn't want to adhere those teeny tiny little dark green dots that's in between the vines. So I'm going to only show you the coloring for the tiger and the cheetah for this card since you already saw the monkey toucan and the snake from the last card. So I am going in between both the tiger and the cheetah just to let one of them dry as I work on the other. And for the tiger I am using the orange color and the light brown color. For the cheetah I use the yellow and the light brown. And again, there's no light source. I'm just trying to add some darker areas to add some interest. And all of these animals I thought were perfect to have sitting on the vines, climbing up the vines. The tiger especially looks like it's climbing up something. So I thought it was perfect for this card. The positions of the animals worked out perfectly. So I'm just going to finish up that cheetah and then off camera, I will die cut all of these animals. For all of the watercoloring, I am using a Winkastella brush. So all of these images have a really pretty shimmer to them. 
So now I'm going to work on the sentiment. I chose happy birthday and I white heat embossed it onto some black cardstock. I wanted to tie in the black some more so I will add a black mat behind the vine panel. And now I'm just arranging my animals. I thought the snake would be cute slithering down the vine. And then the monkey and the toucan are just sitting on the vine. I did decide to trim down my sentiment to a banner shape. And then I will add some foam tape behind the sentiment and all of my animals. And I'm in the process of making a website. So I knew I had to replenish on my birthday cards, so that's why I decided to go for that sentiment. And now I'm just adhering all of my animals. Again, they have foam tape behind them. And now I'm going to adhere the green panel onto my black mat. I will turn that around and trim off the cheetah's tail and the tiger's tail. Then I will add some more double-sided adhesive and glue that onto my white card base. And that will complete card number three. Again, perfect to give to a male. Creating the inlay panel did take a little bit extra time, but I think it's worth it. I really love how the animals look like they're sitting and climbing on the vines. For card four, I'm going to use the stencil that came in the kit. I'm taking a four by five and a quarter inch light blue panel and taping it behind my stencil just to keep it in place. And now I'm going to take a sky blue memento dewdrop ink and my life changing brush to ink this background. And I'm going to end up with a tone on tone result. And I thought that is what I wanted for this card, but I end up using it in the next card. So that's why I left it in this uh, portion of the video. So I wanted to use the flamingo again from the stamp set. I think that was my favorite animal because like I said, flamingos are my favorite animal. So I wanted to use it again and I'm going to create some water beneath my flamingo using the ocean layering stamp set that came in the June 2018 card kit. So for the first layer, I'm using the same sky blue memento ink. For the second layer, I am using a reactive blue ink from Hero Arts. And then for the last darkest layer, I am using Nautical Blue by Memento. And I will leave links to all the inks down below. And it was at this point that I felt the background was just too busy. So I did trim off the water portion and I'm going to adhere it onto a plain light blue panel. I created the frame, the pink frame, using my rectangle dies. You can tell that frames are a recurring theme in this video. I just had a lot of ideas for scenes with this kit, and I typically like to frame in my scenes, especially if they're a little bit smaller. So um, it just kind of happened that way. And this card looks kind of similar to card number one. I just changed the top portion a little bit. Right now I'm adhering all of the images that I wanted to use. I chose the flamingo, water lily, and the bunches of flowers. And now I'm going to work on my sentiment. I chose you are my paradise. I will ink it up with my VersaFine Onyx Black ink and stamp it down. And then I can work on the frame portion of this card. I thought it would be really cute to use those vine dies that came in the kit and have them hanging from one edge of the frame to the other. And then I also hung a few vertical vines coming from the top of the frame. I used a few different colored vines, again, kind of like the inlay card. I liked the variety of the different greens together. I'm varying the heights that I'm gluing these vines on my frame. I did add one more to the corner there. And now I'm just trimming off the excess. And of course, I have to add acetate behind this frame and I will pop it up like I have been doing. Again, using my art glitter glue to adhere this frame onto the acetate. This acetate I get from Amazon. If I can find it, I'll link below. It's a very good price. I think you get 50 sheets. They're all eight and a half by 11 inches and I will say the acetate's flimsy, so it's not good for heat embossing, but I use a lot of acetate, so I think this is great. So I'll try to link it down below if I can find it. So now we're moving on to card number five, 
And this card's pretty quick because I didn't show the coloring, but I am inking up a Dara circle that I die cut with some white cardstock. I'm inking the stencil again with my yellow distress ink and my ink blending or my life changing brush. I did stamp and color and die cut this elephant. I unfortunately lost the footage of this coloring for the elephant, but I will have another elephant in part two and I will leave the coloring in for that video. And now I'm just arranging a few of the leaves that I colored and die cut around this cute little elephant. This card ended up being my favorite because I think the image is just very popping, it's big, and the colors of this card are really pretty as well. So I am adding a few smaller leaves just to fill in those blank areas on this uh, wreath. I do add this leaf to the top, but when I add it to the blue panel that we made from the last card, um, I didn't like it. It was just sticking out too much, so I took it off. And it was at this point I felt the blue panel was a little too small, so off camera I inked up another blue uh, stenciled background, and I made it just a quarter inch bigger, and I think it made quite the difference. So now I'm adding it behind some gray paper. I did pop up my whole wreath using some foam tape and now I am gluing my gray mat to my five and a quarter by five and a quarter inch square note card and I thought about adding a sentiment but I felt like it didn't need one and so I left it as is and I think it's okay so you can add anything you want on the inside of that card so now I'm going to show you all five cards that I created using this kit I am having a lot of fun I did finish my last five cards today so I'm going to try to get that video up tomorrow but thank you guys so much for watching let me know which card was your favorite and if you haven't yet already please subscribe to my channel thanks again for stopping by bye